Welcome again. You may be wondering what's the monument behind me and who are these guys. So the monument is called the founding monument of Kiev. So you guessed it, these guys have something to do with the founding of the city of Kiev. In fact, the first man that you see there, they named the city after him because the four are siblings. So he is the oldest one. They named the city of Kiev after him and the lady her name is Libida. This monument went from a historic random monument to becoming a very famous one because anyone who marry here or the tradition is that people who marry in the city of Kiev they have to come here the day of wedding and they have to throw a flower and if the flower bouquet fall inside the boat then the marriage will be happy. This is a beautiful city, a beautiful town, the beautiful flag of Ukraine the Lavra Monument, you see the monastery of the cave, I'm not sure if you see it, the golden domes there. This is what you call the monastery of the cave. I vlogged about it and you'll see my vlogging coming when I went into the caves of the, what they call Peshersk Lavra, which is the monastery of the cave. More than 800 meters of cave were excavated a thousand years ago by a monk because when he came back here from Greece, he found his piece into that hill and he excavated some channels. In fact, there, there are, the there, graves their bodies are there so it's of an extreme holiness for the people of kiev ukraine and to be honest for the christian orthodox so peshersk lavra or the monastery of the cave the founding monument of kiev capital of ukraine and the beautiful flag of ukraine if you are ready it's in fact 4 30 pm just one hour before the sunset so we gotta finish this class with something very important now that you have just calculated the energy released by the fission of one gram of uranium as we found equivalent to one megawatt a day it's like one million of watt a day take something that consume one megawatt this is not your oven or your fridge this is maybe an engine of a small ship if you want and supply it for one day if you make a fission of one uranium atom it's a massive amount of energy now that we know this potential we have two possibilities either use this energy for peaceful reasons or for harmful reasons like nuclear bombs since i'm a peaceful man i'm gonna go for the civil version and i'm gonna show you how a civil nuclear reactor works how we heat water in the nuclear reactor and how we extract that heat energy so we can heat other water boil it transform it to steam turn the turbine generator produce the beautiful electricity that you consume in your house so you can watch your favorite video like this one and more importantly turn that thumb up blue for me which means please click on the like button Jakuya, let's do the class the global operation of nuclear reactor put in the circuit primary circuit then secondary then the third circuit we saw it in the last video in fact the first video the link to it will appear at the top right corner of the screen if you haven't watched it i recommend you start with that one but in this video at this time i'm gonna start zooming on the nuclear reactor itself see how it operates uh, and the main elements that uh, makes constitute the reactor So one of the first elements that you can expect inside the nuclear reactor is the fuel because that's where the uranium is and that's the atom that we would like to extract its nuclear energy. So the fuel elements they look something like this. So what you see here in red, fuel element. So here, to be more accurate, we will use uranium 235. I don't need to say that it's 92 because it's 92. That's the, the, the isotope. There's like 238, etc. as we explained before. Once I send a first neutron, this Uranium-235 will split, it will create krypton and barium, and it will release more neutrons. These neutrons that will be released, they need something called moderator. Why we call it moderator is because we want to decrease, to lower the speed of these generated neutrons. Remember, the first neutron that will start the nuclear reaction, the nuclear reaction in chain, will be at an energy of 0.04 electron volt, right? The created ones, so I send this one, 
and then later on I get between two or three neutrons these ones their energy will be at zero one mega electrovolt up to 10 mega electrovolt it's a huge difference in speed these are so fast that in fact they will even not create more reaction in chain because they are so fast the probability that they will hit another uranium atom and create another nuclear fission is 500 times less than the probability that the first neutron will hit a uranium atom it's extremely fast as i told you compare four cents four cents of dollar to one million dollar so because when we say between 0.1 to 10 let's take the example of one mev it's like four cents to in fact 10 10 million dollars so how to slow down these new created neutrons so that they can initiate on their own automatically hands off other nuclear reactions you need something that we call moderator and you see where i'm going with this because i'm using blue color Therefore, the moderator is simply water. Now you might be wondering how comes water will slow down these neutrons. Well, if these are H2O particle, let's say you have one here another one here if you throw at them like this neutron or neutrons coming at a fast speed when this neutron will hit this first H2O particle which is water the neutron will slow down so it will go from this high energy to a lower one etc 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 until the neutron is at a speed kind of slow enough to hit a uranium atom a uranium 235 this one that we saw here and create a nuclear fission so this is one role of water which we call moderator let's write it down before we forget it so here water is the moderator all right the second role of the moderator which is the water is because why are we having a nuclear reactor is to create heat but someone need to extract that heat from the fuel element and send it somewhere else so we can boil water transform it to steam and send it on a turbine generator group which creates electricity that someone that extracts the heat from the fuel element is the water this is the role of this water so if my memories are correct from the visit i made to a nuclear power plant east of france called fessenheim power plant this water here is at 285 c so the water inside the reactor core is about 285 c and yet it's still in a liquid state for reasons we explained in my first video which in case you missed it i recommend you start with it it's gonna show here in the top right corner of the screen in that video i explained that this water the reason why it's still liquid at 285 we know that water evaporates at 100 c right in your home when you cook for your pasta why here it's still liquid is because we have something else in the circuit called pressurizer we increase the pressure of water and the temperature at which water will evaporate will not be 100 c anymore so this water is at a high pressure again from my visit to the nuclear power plant east of france if my memories are correct it was at 155 bar you multiplied by 10 power 10 power 5 to get to the pascal so it's a very high pressure therefore the water will not evaporate at 100 c so liquid water that will play the role of kind of the how should I call it? It's gonna play the role of a heat carrier. It's gonna carry the heat from the fuel element. Take it because this is this is a circuit. What you see here, this I'm just zooming on the reactor. It goes like this, and this part it goes to the steam generator. The, you see the generator that you see that element that creates steam, the steam that we send to the turbine generator to create electricity. This water will go to the steam generator and we will heat another water. This is where this is interesting. This water here has will never 
touch the turbine generator. This will be in the first building called nuclear reactor building. So this water will remain here. It will go to the steam generator. And the only thing that will go out from the steam generator to the second building, which is like more the electric building, which is more what we call the turbine building. So this will be in what we call NI, nuclear island. The other building will be called Turbine Island. That's where electricity is produced. The only thing out from here will be a steam pipe. That's it. And then back we'll have water. And the last element which I didn't draw, which I'm gonna draw now, is this one. Now we have slowed down our neutrons. Everybody is happy, but there is an issue here. I'm sending one neutron initially at moment t equal to zero to start the nuclear reaction. But the fission of the first uranium-235 will release two to three neutrons. So from one neutron, I get two or three. Let's even forget the third. One neutron, I get two. That means the quantity after, let's say, one hour, the quantity of this will go really exponentially, it will go really big. I'm gonna end up with a lot of neutrons that also will create more nuclear reactions. So I can expect that my nuclear reaction will not be controllable anymore. But I don't want to have that because this is not a bomb. This is a civil nuclear reactor. I want to control the nuclear fission. Therefore, I need someone that will consume or absorb neutrons. That someone is what I just draw here. These yellow bars that we call control rods. Let's write it here, control rods. So the control rod is made of usually either boron or cadmium. So boron or cadmium is what makes the control rods. These elements are capable of absorbing the excessive neutrons, therefore, I can control the nuclear reaction. Think of this as the accelerator or the brake. Well, what is the accelerator? The accelerator is because I have a fuel element and water as moderator. Just by having these, what's gonna happen is the first neutron released will create three more neutrons after the atom splits. I will have three more neutrons between two to three. The fact that I put water in it, water will slow them down. Therefore, these neutrons have way more chance to generate, create more nuclear fissions, right? Because I need what you call thermal neutron. This is a thermal neutron. In other words, it's a slow neutron, not a fast one. So the fact that I have water with fuel elements, I send the first proton, therefore I start the nuclear reaction. This is a beautiful accelerator. It's gonna be really fast and it will not stop. It's gonna be atoms splitting after atoms after atoms. I need a brake. And who is my brake? Well, it's simply these control rods. If you want to slow down the process, the process of nuclear reaction, then insert the rods because there are many. Think of it, I just draw one fuel element actually two few elements and one two rods one here and one here there are it can be like thousands of them depending on the power of the nuclear reactor you can have thousands of them so i just draw two for simplicity reasons so the brake which plays the role of the brake is these two rods if you want to decelerate well simply insert more rods you can you have many you have the choice of how many rods you can insert ideally you can insert all of them at the same time and lift them all of them at the same time. So if you want to slow down the process, the nuclear reaction process, then just lower down the control rods. If you lower them down, they will absorb more neutrons. Therefore, you have less actors to start more nuclear reaction because what starts the nuclear reaction actually what sustain it. What starts it is the first neutron I send. What sustains the nuclear reaction is these created neutrons that will hit other uranium atoms, uranium 235, and then split it, which in, in turn will generate more neutrons. So, insert more rods, they will absorb these uh, neutrons that are the actors that create the nuclear fission and therefore you will slow down the entire nuclear reaction process. If you want to create more nuclear power, then what you have to do is simply to lift up these control rods, then in this case you will absorb less neutrons, so therefore you will have more available neutrons in the water, in the moderator, that they will hit other uranium atoms that are in the fuel bars that you see here. So what's the difference between a nuclear reactor, a civil nuclear reactor, and a nuclear bomb? One of them, you can already guess it, is the way we control the nuclear 
reaction in the core itself. Here we are trying to slow down things, we are trying to slow down the speed of the neutrons so that they can catch more uh, uranium atoms. We are trying to control the number of neutrons by inserting the control rods, etc. In a nuclear bomb, we don't want to control that nuclear reaction. We want to create something that is uncontrollable. We want to release the power the nuclear power that you remember was holding the, the atom of the uranium was holding the protons and neutrons together. We want to release that nuclear force as big as possible, as uncontrollable as possible. Here it's really the opposite that we are trying to do. Of course there are other differences like this one which we say the fuel element. So the fuel element, one thing I didn't tell you is that the uranium 238 is way more abundant than uranium 235. In fact 99. 99.3, almost 99.3 of the uranium available on Earth is uranium 238, not the one that we need here. That is why they have to go through an enrichment process where they will have to increase the presence, the percentage of uranium 235 to something between 3 to 4 percent. That's the amount of uranium 235 that we use here in the fuel element of a civil nuclear reactor on nuclear bomb the enrichment process goes up to 80%. Of course, other differences in terms of structure, etc. The detonation of the bomb, here there is no detonation. There is a lot of structural difference, but on the physical level, these are like the two main differences, is the presence of the uranium, the quantity of it, and the fact that on a nuclear bomb, we don't want to control that process. We want to make it as uncontrollable as possible, while here we are trying to control that chain nuclear reaction. Another thing, back to the atomic level, the stability. Are all the elements, the atoms available in nature, stable or unstable? The answer is the following. is because above number 83, 83 means 83 protons. That's too much. You have 83 protons, therefore you can expect another number of neutrons. So when you sum both of them, the core, the size of the nucleus is too big. So that, if you remember, the nuclear force, when you look at, applies at the nucleus level, the core of the atom, but that nuclear force, these were the protons. And these were the neutrons. And this was the core of the atom. Because this core is becoming, and if you remember the orbit of the electrons, right? So the electrons are orbiting like here. Now, since the elements that have an atomic number higher than 83 will have more than 83 protons, therefore it will result in a big nucleus. Therefore, this nuclear force will lose its intensity, especially at the edges of the nucleus. So therefore that nucleus, that atom has way more probability of splitting. Therefore today it is accepted by scientists that any element above 83, because they are still discovering new chemical elements, any elements above that is considered unstable atom. Therefore, since it's considered unstable, you can create a fission on it so you can split it and release nuclear energy. If you try to do it on copper or iron, it will be extremely complicated for you to fission iron or uh, copper, for example, because they are the number of protons they have is way lower than uranium, for example. So therefore, we talk about atoms stability. It's the probability that that atom will split in time because if the nucleus become too big the elements above 83 in the periodic table if the nucleus the core of the atom becomes too big that atom will be in a state where its nucleus is too big so therefore it will seek another state to reduce the size of its nucleus by splitting for example or by radiation through time which we call decaying in time you have many types of decay um, you have alpha by releasing alpha particle you can decay by releasing beta particle or gamma ray so the decay means losing energy by radiation in time it can take few seconds or minutes it can take thousands of years we see when you look at the uranium 238 so the uranium 238 not the one we use here in the nuclear reaction the other one that is very abundant 99.2 of uranium on earth is uranium 238 is naturally occurring it's half-life like how Half-life means the time by which the element will lose half of its radiation. Its half-life is as high as the age of Earth, which means 4.5 billion years. So that's the half-life of uranium 238. But now we are talking about radiation, about decay, 
about nuclear waste because after we produced energy, we extracted energy from the fuel element, which we will use to boil water, steam it, send it to the turbo generator and create electricity. Now you want to say, what are we going to do with the wastes, the nuclear wastes that are created after these nuclear fission? That's the topic of the next video, nuclear waste, because it's so important. We will talk about decaying, the different type of radiation, alpha, beta, gamma, which one is more toxic, which one is even lethal. We will talk about all that stuff because that is, I would say, the most critical part is the management of the nuclear waste. It's even as critical as the creation of the nuclear power itself. Of course, the dominating country in this segment is my country, the country of France, the largest waste treatment, nuclear waste treatment plant in the entire planet is in La Hague, in France. Thank you very much for watching. I genuinely hope that you learned something, that you got inspired from this beautiful city, this beautiful country that is, I would say, officially linked to the nuclear power forever, but that's for other reason, for a less happy reason, which we will get time to explain also in a dedicated video. I'm talking about the disaster of Chernobyl. This has been said, my friends. It is getting freezing cold. That means it's time for me. Sur ces belles phrases, je vous dis, belle soirée et à demain. Ciao.